Hello everyone, so today we will be seeing fabrication of occlusal rims without air bubbles. So as you can see, we are starting off with the maxillary cast. Actually, I couldn't, I just missed out my uh, video which was in the initial which is rolling of the wax. But never mind, which is coming up in the, for the mandible. Now you have to roll the wax as such and you have to place it while placing itself you can give a 15 degree angulation slightly but uh, actually I missed out that it's totally fine if you didn't give also because we can add it up later. Now the rest of the flange areas you can either drop out method you can use dropping of the wax onto that area but you, you know it takes time a lot. So I'm more comfortable with the other way around that is taking a strip of wax uh, in the same length you can take and just I add it on by softening the wax I add it throughout the periphery so now you can see now there must be there not must be it is for sure that there are many air bubbles that are being entrapped between the layers so now what we do is that we heat the wax knife and we slowly increment wise okay we create well that is we nicely melt the wax in that area and while melting you can visually appreciate the air bubbles coming out you know, it's really nice to see because the wax you know you can see how we are doing well in a section by section slowly we melt the wax and wait for some time you can appreciate it over there it gives such a smooth finish that it doesn't even give any air bubbles you can even eliminate all the air bubbles when you do in such a way the entire rim will be done in this way you can see from both the sides the other side is having some white white patches in inner side so it's really difficult to remove that while placing itself so after placing how to remove is after placing you can heat the area slowly little little increments and do like this now one side we have done almost now we are moving on to the midline and then we are going on to the next side similarly Now we have almost finished of all the uh, the entire rim area now we need to give it a smooth touch right so for that uh, now at this point actually you can give the angulation initially also you can give when you're placing you can just give a little bit of push on the anterior side just push the anterior side rim so it will give a angulation automatically if you didn't get that angulation while placing no problem you can add the wax now i'm going to add it on the anterior region by drop method also you can avoid the air bubbles so since we need only little area to be covered so i'm just adding you know some areas in the anterior region and also some areas in the posterior i felt like it was a little bit deficient of wax and not only that while adding and then when we are giving a smooth touch evenly we will get a layer right for that also so now I'm giving an anterior tilt, now I'm going to give it. Now you can see there are, in this side you can see now a little bit of air bubble. Uh, you can see when compared to the other side it's not there. So uh, I'm just trying to remove that air bubble also which has been there and trapped inside. You have to do it slowly why because or else you know it can flow the wax can flow off so that air bubble we have we got it done even that said a little bit of air bubbles were there so that also we have done it well now we know that the height is more so we are going to reduce the height using the hot plate nicely uh, it is always advisable to get some vernier calipers like this it's hardly it's less than 300 rupees you can get it from amazon the thing we can get a accurate measurement okay so with that itself we can mark now anterior it should be 22 centimeters and in the posterior it will be sorry 22 millimeter and in the posterior it will be 18 mm then the thickness of the rim also you can adjust accordingly now you can see that 
I'm really very sorry. Yeah, it is almost in the range of 22.8. It's always good to keep a bit, a little bit higher end rather than directly reducing it to 22 and 18. Why? Because we need so much of polishing to be done to the end. We need the denture to be chip blowed and you know the thickness will reduce and also at times we need to hot plead. Again you need to do the occlusal surface. So if we have something around 22.5 it's very good actually. Because uh, even if we reduce a little it will correctly come into 22. 0.5 is really very minute. Now you can see I'm trying to add the anterior uh, inclination that is of 15 degree and when you're doing that also you can angle it your wax knife in such a way that you don't touch the incisal region. So when you're reducing in the, in the uh, cervical or to the, the flange area what happens is it automatically gives that angulation. And later just smooth off it in uh, one stroke like one side should be done in a single stroke don't keep like a little bit little bit don't do like that why because it is wax it suddenly cools off so it will give lines over there so but you know in one smooth one side you have to do then the other side from the you can see so you will get a uniform even look now we can see how the lingual side also it is not much reduced That is the thickness of the uh, occlusal rim is not reduced. So here also we will be marking. Uh, it is uh, what we what I usually do is we are having anterior four to six. Then in the middle region we have six to eight, and in the to the posterior region we are having eight to ten. So you can either go with the lower range or you can go with the higher end. That is either you can take only like uh, four, six, eight. You can take that so that it gives a gradual reduction. Or else you can take like the higher end that is 6, uh, 8, 10 you can take. In such a way also you can take. But do it's, it's not advisable to take like 4 you take from one side and 8 in the second and then again six, uh, um, 10 in the other. It's not much. It doesn't give a visual that look won't be much. So it's always good to take either the lower end or the higher end and follow it throughout. Now you can see I am reducing it in such a way, I have already marked with my vernier caliper and now I am reducing it. I have 22.8 mm thick uh, height so I can take, whenever I am doing once to get it a clean smooth finish I can use again the hot plate. Now we are removing on the palatal surface whatever um, excess wax has been there, just scraping it off. And you can use a cotton too after just chip blow, you can chip blow that area towards the last you can do that. If there is a bulk of wax then it's better to remove first using your uh, carver or something and later just give little bit heat also you can give. Now we are coming on to the final polishing. Just heat throughout your denture with uh, occlusal rim with chip blower and take a good amount of cotton which is dipped in water and just you know without any pressure you just simply go through you know just run through the occlusal rim they never give a pressure so it gives a very good uh, very good shine to your denture okay towards the end i'll show you how my occlusal rim looked like and here you can see you must have seen how i rolled the uh, mandibular this uh, wax also roll it just heat it roll it like that you roll and keep it according to the shape and again a strip of wax same as how we have done for the mac maxilla this is the same method that will be carried out for mandible too and now see like uh, you create two wells so the wax will be you know it will be confined to that two area itself it won't flow away just heat it nicely so that uh, it is completely melt in that area and it cools down also faster now similarly we will do the entire rim So one side we have finished, now moving on to the other side also. This will ensure you that you don't have any air bubbles inside. 
because since it comes in when we bend it it comes uh, sorry when we fold it it comes in so many so much of layers so that layers everything will be now removed off everything will be in as a single block now ex if you find somewhere you know it is less you can add it with drop drop method so it will be very you know that also ensures that there is no entrapped air bubbles within then you can after you have done with that you can reduce the height of the occlusal rim and also you can finish it using your you can just run the, your wax knives longer end through the rim and it gives a even finish throughout you know that anteriorly it is 18 mm but this is more than 20 even i think it is more than uh, 25 mm and almost around 30 mm it must be there so uh, roughly you can reduce it uh, nicely and later once you feel that it is coming towards 20 you can measure it you can mark it and then you can tr uh, you can just heat it again now just defining the area i felt that was little bit uh, lesser in the retromolar area you know that in anteriorly it is 18 mm and towards the posterior it tends towards the retromolar pad area so i was just adding wax over there now just giving a uh, you know just heated wax knife throughout the rim in a one flow one side should be done in a single flow otherwise what happens it will form the lines as same as that in maxilla how we have done this might take i i won't say you that this will get over within maybe uh with maybe less than five minutes or something never but for sure it might take at least to 10 minutes for you to completely do this maybe 10 minutes because you need the wax to melt and you need the exact measurements to be done and you need the wax melted wax to be cooled down it takes uh, max for max it might take 10 minutes but believe me if you spend 10 minutes for a rim it is worth of doing why because it gives such a nice satisfaction for you now you can hear here also you can see the thickness of the rim you have to take it the way like either the higher end or the lower end you have 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8. So either you can take 2, 4, 6 or you can take 4, 6, 4, uh, 6, 8. Either way you can take. Now I always use the higher end. Here also I am taking 4, 6 and 8. 4 in the anterior, 6 in the middle A region and 8 in the posterior side. Now once again I am just defining well with one stroke and then we will do chip blower and again the same we will do the cotton method that is we will dip the cotton in water and that it should it should, it should not be you shouldn't uh, you know uh, save the cotton don't think like that but take a large amount of cotton itself and just run it through the occlusal rim surface never give pressure don't rub it on the surface just run it through the surface now i have kept that in the water bowl of water now you can see how perfectly without any air bubbles we have got the rims 10 minute if you spend you will get a super satisfied occlusal rim and even your guides or your teachers would be really impressed by your work too now again we are chip blowing it and then you know, with slight finger pressure there is no finger pressure actually just we are rubbing it you know just not even just touching it through the occlusal rim now i'll show you both the uh, yeah before while placing in the cast also you can remove the freedom areas if the uh, wax is there you can just remove it off and later Whenever you do some uh, error checking or something, then again you have to chip blow it. So it will give a very good shine on it. Now I'll show you how both the dentures, how sorry, both the occlusal rim, how it looks, how it glows, how it really, you know, without any air bubbles. So that was our maxilla and the mandible. You can see how much it shines from here itself. I'll show you both. Yeah, you can appreciate the shine it is having, and there's no air bubble and it's so, so evenly done. 
even the inner surface looks very neat and tidy this is a close up view which you can see try it out and do let me know in the comment section